Hey, it's Dan Zimmerman. Welcome to Illustrate to Educate. Don't forget to subscribe for weekly objective videos on topics that matter. Have you ever wondered what a political spectrum is? Or what does left wing and right wing mean? In this video, I'll explain all of this and more in a simple and objective way. A political spectrum is a way to describe and classify different political ideologies in relation to one another. These positions can be mapped out on a single geometric axis or two-dimensional axes to help represent and describe different political ideologies. You can think of it kind of like a map or a compass. Keep in mind, there are several versions that exist out there. One of the most common is the left to right spectrum. It originated from the seating arrangements in the French Parliament after the French Revolution from 1789 to 1799. Those on the left, called radicals, supported the revolution, while those on the right, called aristocrats, supported the monarchy. Later, we'll look at how that translates into the terms left-wing and right-wing that you commonly hear used today. First, let's take a look at where the political spectrum is used. You'll find the terms within the political spectrum used in much of the media today, as well as in speech and writing among journalists, broadcasters, economists, and in academics as well as politicians. Someone's position on the political spectrum is typically discussed in terms of where they are positioned relative to the center. In political talk, you'll often hear people use the political spectrum to signify a person or policy while trying to find common ground. For example, a politician might be accused of being too left-wing, or a media outlet might be known as right-wing media. So what exactly does left and right mean? Let's take a look at that next. The left-right political spectrum is used to describe political positions, ideologies, and parties, from social equality and progressive ideologies on the left to social hierarchy and conservative ideologies on the right. For example, if we look at the balance between government power and individual liberty, the left would strive for an equal society and support the government playing a large part in people's lives in order to achieve this. They tend to support higher taxes on the rich, welfare for the poor, and government regulation of business and the economy. If we take a look at the right, the right would say that a certain level of social inequality is unavoidable and that the government should play a limited role in people's lives. They strive to support a laissez-faire approach to the economy. Laissez-faire is a French term which roughly translates as leave things alone. Those on the right believe that less business regulation will help innovation and lowering taxes on businesses will help them grow. Now, let's look at some political theories and where they sit on the left-right spectrum. When looking at political theories like communism and socialism, it would be placed in differing degrees on the left because they support social organization that is owned or regulated by the community or government. Conservative and fascist theories are typically regarded as being on the right because they support varying degrees of nationalism and independence. Then liberalism can mean different things in different contexts, with social liberalism on the left and conservative liberalism on the right, and those in the middle are classified as centrists or moderates. Many argue that a one-dimensional spectrum is too simplistic. Hans Eysenck, a German-born British psychiatrist, made a model that added a second axis to the political spectrum with authoritarian and democratic dimensions to better place political theories. Next, let's look at a couple examples of policies and where they are positioned on the spectrum. An example of a policy on the left would be Sweden's Parental Leave Act in 1974. Sweden became the first country in the world to introduce parental leave that could be split between two parents of a child. It was pushed forward by the Social Democratic Party, which is known to pass progressive policies on social change. An example of a policy on the right would be the United States Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in 2017, which reduced tax rates for businesses from 35% to 21%. It was implemented by the Republican Party, which generally supports laissez-faire economics. What about political parties? On the left wing, you'll find parties like the Democrat Party from the United States, the Green Party from the United Kingdom and the United States, the Labour Party from the United Kingdom, and the Socialist Party from France. Right-wing parties include the Republican Party from the United States, the Constitution Party from the United States, the Conservative Party from the United Kingdom, and the Law and Justice Party from Poland. And lastly, the Libertarian Party can be placed on the left or the right depending on the topic. It's important to remember that it's not all black and white. Not all principles, laws, political parties, or politicians can be neatly classified as left or right wing, as most will include elements of both. Likewise, politicians 
even those who describe themselves as being left-wing or right-wing, will often support one or two principles from the other side of the spectrum. For example, many policies for both the Democrat and Republican Party could be considered right or left-wing. Likewise, a political party might become more left or right-wing depending on its leader at the time. It's always worth checking out the party's actual platform before making up your mind on who to vote for. Now you might be wondering, why does any of this matter? It's useful to have an understanding of the political spectrum for a number of reasons. Reason number one, it can help you recognize bias in the media because it might influence how they present certain people and events. Reason number two, it can help you to reflect on your own bias, whether you lean more towards the left or the right, and it might impact how you view politics in general. And reason number three, it can help you to understand why a new policy or law is being supported depending on the political party behind it. Did you enjoy this video? Hopefully you were able to better understand the political spectrum. Please like and share the video, subscribe to Illustrate to Educate, and comment on your thoughts about where you think you fit on the left-right spectrum. And don't forget to check out some of my other videos to the right.